Okay, for this lesson, um, it is also dealing with the constant of proportionality, which again just means something is increasing or decreasing at the same rate. Um, I think the majority of what we've been doing is all increasing, but it could also be decreasing as well. Um, but again, I'm just going to go over um, the first example that's already done for you, and then I'm going to do number two with you so you can see um, more of what is supposed to be happening. Um, I think after you see one or two, it should, even though it might look like a lot at first, it's actually not too bad. Okay, so let's look at this first one that's done for you. It says, Emily made a table for baking apple pies. Complete the table to find the constant of proportionality, then graph the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. So again, there's several things that are happening. We have a table over to the left, we have a graph to the right of it, and then at the bottom, we fill in the table with the missing pieces of information. So if you notice, what this table is telling us is it's saying that it, she made four pies and it took her 20 apples to make four of those pies. When she made five pies, it took her 25 apples. So just like the previous lessons, in order to figure out how, much, how many apples per pie that she needs, you just divide. So if you notice there in that table, every time they divided the two numbers, the apples and the pie ratio, it ended up being five. So what that means, if you go down to the bottom where it says unit rate, what that means is it takes five apples to make every single pie. The other thing that um, might be maybe a little bit newer for you is the ordered pairs. I always compare this to the game Battleship. If you played Battleship before, um, you are saying like E4, C5, something like that. Those are coordinates. Those are locations on a map. Or in this case, we're talking about graphs. So that's all an ordered pair is. So where they got these numbers from, the 4, 20, the 5, 25, where they got all those numbers from, comes from the table up here. Let me see if I can draw. Oops, okay, that will work. So all of these numbers, they turn into coordinates. 4, 20, 5, 25. They took these the coordinates, and that's what they put on the graph. So if you notice where those dots are, those points are on the graph, those all came from the ordered pairs. Again, I'm going to do number two with you in a minute. I just kind of want to talk you through this one. Okay, so we already know it means five apples per pie. Constant of proportionality, you already did the math up top. So it was five, K equals five. And then the equation, again, we've written lots of these in class before when we've done word problems. This equation means that it takes five apples for every pie, which means X is representing pie. And if you notice, your x-axis is labeled pies. So that's the equation that you would write. Five apples for every single pie that you would make. All right, so let's try one on our own. All right, Oscar made a table for rental costs of his car. Again, we need to complete the table and graph the ordered pairs. Okay, so when he went 30 miles, it cost him $210. That's insane. <laughs> oh, I guess it's renting. For a second, I was thinking it was gas. That's not gas. It's how much it cost to rent his car. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So 30 miles cost him $210. 50 miles cost $350. So I'm going to zoom in as much as I can to write... So again, you're just going to write the division, and please write it as um, neatly as you can. Zoom in so you can write a little bit neater. So 350 divided by 50 is also going to equal 7. 490 divided by 70 is going to equal 7. Now here's something that's a little different. We actually have to fill in the cost. So we need to fill in, if they go 90 miles, what is the cost going to be? So we kind of need to work backwards. 
So if we know that the cost, we've already figured out it keeps turning into seven. So if the cost is $7 per mile, how much would it be for 90 miles? All you have to do is multiply and that will give you $630. So again, if you wanna work backwards, we are dividing. So the re reverse, if you need to fill in a missing piece would be to multiply. So again, let's try it again. So if we know how many miles, and we know how much the cost is, $7 per mile, 100 times seven means it costs $700. Okay, let me go back to text mode so I can zoom back. Okay, so that part's done. Let's go down and fill in the ordered pairs. So the first one's going to be 30, 210. Again, I'm just getting this from the table here. Let me see if I can change the color. This is where I'm getting those coordinates from. Thirty. Comma two hundred and ten. And you need your parentheses. Okay. The next one is fifty. I need to zoom in. Fifty comma three fifty. I'm gonna have to remember that because I need to zoom in. <laughs> okay. Again, the next one is seventy comma four ninety. Then we had 90 comma 630. Again, please zoom in to help yourself write a little bit neater. And the last one is 100 comma 700. Okay, those coordinates, that, these ordered pairs that we just wrote, those are going to help us when it comes to the graph. Let's fill in a couple of these things first and then we'll go to the graph. So the unit rate, when we kept dividing by 7, what we figured out, that 7 that we kept getting is called the constant. So what that means, we're talking about miles and cost. So that means, let's see if I can change my color again. Let's do a blue. It cost $7 per mile. Again, we already did the division up top to find the constant. So the constant, which we'll call K, is 7. And then again, this is probably the part, if you're going to struggle at all, this is where you're going to struggle, but it's really not too bad. To write the equation, we need to notice how, I guess I didn't mention this in the example, it's already, it has a basic setup, Y equals KX. Well, we just said what K is, K equals 7. So in order to write our equation, we're just going to replace the K with the number. But I think it makes a little bit more sense to think of it a little differently. And we know that it's $7 per mile, so every mile. If you don't know how many miles it's going, that's why we use the X, because that he could drive any amount of miles. And so no matter how many miles he goes, as long as we multiply by $7, it will tell, tell us how much the cost is. Okay, now we're going to take those ordered pairs from the beginning there at the bottom. We're going to take these ordered pairs and we're going to add them to our graph. Let me see if I can move a little bit. Okay, so the first ordered pair is 30, 210. So you always move left and right first. It's called horizontal. And then you move up and down. So 30... I'm going to find 30 here. I'm just going to make a mark just so you can see where I'm going. 30, and then I'm going to go up to 210. So right there should be your first point. Again, zoom in. I'm not zooming in as much as I would probably like, just so we can see the whole screen of all the math. Um, but zoom in to help yourself be as accurate and as neat as possible. Okay, I'm going to put a little check mark. Say, okay, that one's done. The next one is 50, 350. So again, find 50 and then go up to 350. Okay, check that one off. 70 and 490. It's going to be right there. 
90 and 630. I think I need to move it a tiny bit. There we go. And the last one is 100 and 700. And then you should make your graph. So we're right now with what we're learning, we're always going to start at 0, 0. It's called the origin right there in the bottom left corner. That's because if he doesn't drive any miles, then he doesn't spend any money, 0, comma 0. But as he continues to drive, it's going to cost him money. And so I'm just going to ask you to do your best to make a straight line through those points. Just try to be as accurate as you can. So that's what the graph would look like. So that's what you're going to do on these other problems. Again, it's all kind of tying in together. So it might look like a lot at first, but it's really not too bad at all. Down here, you're going to do something similar as well. Um, the only difference is you don't have to obviously do the graph stuff. You're kind of just um, understanding what is happening. So you, you mainly just need to find the constant of what is happening. Okay, as always, if you need more help, please let me know.